The Greek debt crisis is getting even dicier. We'll take a look at the ramifications here in the U.S. Then the latest on the ongoing feud between Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo. Now, the governor may not be too lovable right now, but what exactly is the mayor's endgame in slamming the governor? Also, we'll take a look at the presidential race and debate whether the divide between Democrats that's growing is as bad as the one between the GOP. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're going to begin this evening in Greece and those questions that are on everyone's mind. Will the problems there hurt us here? President Obama not overly concerned. Just take a listen. It's very painful for the Greek people, and it can have a significant effect on growth rates in Europe. So it's something that we take seriously, uh, but it's not something that uh, I think should prompt um, overreactions. Greece's finance minister resigned today amidst all the turmoil, and Greek voters yesterday said no to a new austerity measures all as part of conditions with the new bailout. So today, in Germany, Europe's biggest economy and Greece's biggest creditor, they're still taking a hard line and saying this thing likely will not be resolved quickly. Now, just a short time ago, I spoke about all of this with Forbes' contributing writer, Chris Wright. Depending on who you talk to, this is either end of days or just a blip on the radar. The markets, uh, they didn't, you know, careen off the cliff. But nonetheless, uh, it's palpable, the uncertainty. Just how bad um, is the situation that Greek poses to Europe and to the broader economies? Well, it's a grave situation in that it moves Greece much closer to a formal exit from the euro than it used to be. But you're right when you talk about mixed messages, because as you've said, the markets have rather shrugged at this possibility. It's been around for so long, so many years now, that uh, everybody's ready for it, really. The contagion risks are not what they used to be. And if anything, markets are beginning to want some sense of certainty about it. So while the referendum uh, on Sunday certainly brought Greece much further away than the uh, European Union and Eurozone community and made it much, much more likely that it is going to exit the single currency, I think the fears of that creating some sort of a whole new global financial crisis have gone now, and there is no reason to be fearful of that anymore. But is a greater worry for Merkel and others in the EU is that it's not so much Greece, it's that there could be a contagion here, that this could go to Spain, to Portugal, to Italy, that it doesn't end at Greece's door. Three years ago, there was a very real risk that this, had, had Greece been in this situation then, we would have had a real problem, because that contagion was a very real threat for Spain, for Portugal, for Italy. Looking at it now, uh, for a start, everybody has sort of bolstered themselves against this eventuality anyway. But in particular, Spain is a far stronger economy than it was then. Uh, employment is rising, growth is rising. It's no longer in such a perilous situation. Portugal, yes. Italy, yes. There are problems there. But what you've also got to consider is are either of those countries looking at the mess in Greece thinking, right, that's exactly what I want to happen. I think for anybody to follow Greece uh, away from the euro would have to be some distance away from now. Uh, for seeing Greece back uh, in, in decent circumstances again, its economy recovered. And I don't think anybody's looking at Greece right now thinking, well, that's uh, a situation that I'd like to aspire to. So the uh, contagion risk, I think, has dropped considerably. Yeah, Chris, you know, last week I was in Italy, and it, it, there was this palpable sense, not that they were going to go off the cliff with Greece, but you look at the youth unemployment, not just in that country, but in so many others in Europe right now, and the lack of options, especially for the brain power of the younger generation where to go. So many are leaving those countries, and the worry is, if not now, maybe not too long from now, given the amount of debt these countries are carrying, you know, not everybody's in Germany's position. A lot are worried about what the future holds. Are they right to be worried? Well, you're certainly right that inequality of wealth within Europe is something that has to be addressed or existing problems are just going to get worse. Not just political, not just economic, but social as well. I mean, Italy's challenges are numerous. Uh, membership of the euro is only really uh, a part of that. There's a host of other things going on uh, at the same time. Uh, and so it's not exactly the same sort of uh, situation as Greece faces today, where uh, the issues are very much around indebtedness and whether it should ever really have been in the single currency in the first place. But to speak to your point, 
But yes, there are big problems with the dispersion of wealth uh, in Europe today. It's not getting better, it's getting worse, and that does need to be uh, addressed. When you look at how the Greek uh, PM has played this, I've heard some say crazy, some say crazy as a fox. How do you assess, I mean, he had limited options, let's grant it, but still, uh, he's playing with some fire here. How do you assess uh, his performance to this point? Well, I'm not sure it's going to end up uh, proving to have been in Greece's best interest. It's certainly been quite a performance, as you say, not just uh, the Prime Minister himself, but uh, his finance minister yep. until this morning, Venakouris, who uh, was ousted today in order to uh, make his government a bit more palatable to the rest of Europe. It sounded good, and there is an important argument to be made that austerity is not the only way out of a difficult financial situation. But... Has all of this in the end worked for Greece? The referendum on Sunday, to many eyes, was rather bizarre, actually. I mean, it was asking for a mandate. He'd already been elected and given anyway. It was offering a choice uh, between sticking with what they had in government and uh, a bailout package that had already expired and wasn't really on the table anyway. It's hard to see what uh, sort of trophy, flag-waving moments like that actually achieve. But clearly, it speaks to something that matters enormously to the Greek people, who are blameless in this, really. It's not their fault what their politicians have done. Uh, they wonder how on earth are they supposed to earn a living, get along with life, when everything is telling them to cut, to have less, uh, to have no room for growth in their business and their economy. And so he speaks for a, a marginalized part of society that, uh, that needed a voice and it got one. Good enough. Chris, I really do appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Up next, first the feud, now the fallout. We're going to take a look at the impact of the battle between Governor Andrew Cuomo and Mayor Bill de Blasio. Will this make it even harder to get things done? 